Hello, this is Eric from Big Panda. Welcome to the Getting Started with Environments video. Environments enable you to slice and dice your inbound incidents in many different ways and zoom into specific parts of your network, infrastructure, and applications. In this video, we will cover why we use environments, how to create new environments, how to use environment subfolders, and an automation use case for using environments. First, let's discuss why we use environments. This is the operations console of Big Panda. In the middle, you can see all of the incidents that Big Panda has normalized, enriched, and correlated. The environments are found on the left-hand side and can be used to filter out and show only certain incidents based on user-defined criteria. For example, data centers. Here you can see we have four such environments. One for our Chicago data center incidents, one for Denver, one for Houston, and one for San Francisco. When we click into Chicago, we are only shown the Chicago-related incidents. When we press on Denver, we are only shown the Denver incidents, and same goes for Houston, and so on. Another example for environment grouping is by team. Here you can see defined environments for different teams. We can also define environments for incidents to differentiate between development or production. Applications, infrastructure, cloud, regions and availability zones. Environments can also be used in concert with automated sharing rules to build out automated incident-driven workflows. For example, alerts assigned to this critical infrastructure environment are automatically shared, as can be seen here. Sharing rules for an environment are defined in the settings menu on the top right in the auto share dropdown menu. Here, we can see the auto share defined for the critical infrastructure environment. Clicking edit shows us the sharing rules. All incidents in this environment are shared automatically with ServiceNow, creating a relevant ticket. This ticket is now bi-directionally connected to the incident and an update on one will automatically be updated on the other. Environments are also assigned out of the box dashboards. Let's go look at the dashboards for the data center environments. Dashboards reside in the Dashboard tab. Here, you can see the incidents grouped by critical or warning statuses. Dashboards can also show you incidents grouped by status workflow, like in this example of the team environment dashboards. You can see that the incidents are grouped by unhandled, shared, assigned, and snoozed. Users can also star an environment, essentially flagging it as a favorite making it more accessible by having it appear at the top of the screen. Now, let's see how we create new environments. To create a new environment, select this blue New Environment button, which opens the Create an Environment form. Upon opening, the cursor will default to the name field, which is a text-based field. Use a name that describes the purpose of this environment, for example, Database Team. The Apply to Group field is a drop-down menu, which is defaulted to General. You can select the environment group to which this environment will belong. For example, Teams. You can change this later on at any stage. The Full Access Roles drop-down menu provides a list of user roles that you can assign full access to. In this case, we choose Admins and Database Admins. Similarly, the Read Access Roles drop-down menu provides you with the list of user roles that you can assign read-only access to, which means they can view all incidents and alerts in this environment but will not have permissions to take action on them, such as assigning them, snoozing them, or commenting on them. Here, since we are creating a database team environment, we can choose the appropriate users and database users. Note that if a role is not given access to an environment, users with that role will not be able to see this environment. In the Include Incidents That Meet These Criteria section, we define which incidents we want to appear in this environment. The source field defines the source of the incident. It is a drop-down menu which includes all of these sources integrated with Big Panda from which we can select, with the first option being all sources. In this example, we choose Datadog. We can then create and or logical operators on incidents to build out filters to create the environment. For example, we can filter out all of the incidents related to the database team so only they are added to our environment. In the Select a Tag drop-down menu, we can see that the tags are auto-populated based on the tags that are found in the incoming events collected by Big Panda. Let's choose the Team tag. 
In the Select and Operator drop-down menu, we choose equals to, and in the Open Text field, we enter Database. We can also decide to include incidents from all apps. We add an AND operator, choose the tag App, then equals to, and then a wildcard asterisk to include all apps. More information on the types of supporter operators and queries that can be used can be found in the BigPan Online Docs website. On the right side, we can view the live preview of our filter to check that the filter is working in the way we expect it to. We can continue adjusting our environment definitions until they represent the result we set out to achieve. For example, we can add incidents coming from Nagios that are affecting our database team and are coming from a certain list of applications. To do so, we add an OR operator, choose Nagios as the source, then choose Impacted Team equals to database and add that the app is chosen from a list, which we can then add as a comma separated list. The include checkboxes allow us to add warnings and acknowledged slash maintenance based incidents into the environment. By default, only critical incidents will appear in an environment unless checked. Clicking Save Environment creates the environment and it now appears in the Environment pane in the Teams group as we selected. Now let's talk about environment subfolders. All environments have Active, Unhandled, Shared, Snoozed, Maintenance, and Resolved subfolders. All active incidents can either be unhandled or shared. The shared subfolder is a queue for active incidents that have been shared via any collaboration tool, such as a ticketing system, Slack, email, text messages, and more. The number of shares can be seen here near the blue arrow. Clicking it shows the shared details. This incident has been shared three times on Slack, then on ServiceNow, and then on Slack again. The unhandled subfolder is a queue for active incidents that have not been shared, as can be seen here. The snooze subfolder contains a queue for incidents that have been placed into a temporary snooze, taking the incident out of the active queues. Here, you can see this incident snoozed for the next 17 minutes. If a snooze incident is not resolved within a specified time frame, the incident automatically becomes active and will appear again in the active queues. The snooze subfolder becomes handy when you are aware that a team is currently working on an incident and you want to take the incident out of everyone's active queues. The maintenance subfolder contains a queue of incidents that occurred within a maintenance window as well as meeting certain conditions. Maintenance plans are set in the settings window on the top right. For example, here you can see a maintenance schedule for the claims processing app between 9.52 and 10.22. Going back to the maintenance subfolder, we can see the incidents, in this case only one, that have been filtered accordingly. These incidents are not considered active, but appear in the queue to give you visibility into inbound alerts resulting from maintenance. The Resolved subfolder is where all resolved incidents for the environment for the past 24 hours will reside. This is handy if you want to quickly locate an incident that was recently resolved. For more advanced historical search options, use the Search tab at the top of the navigation bar. Now let's take a look at a common use case for using environments. Automating notifications and ticketing for incidents. Let's take a look at how we set up the environment we created for Tier 1 infrastructure warnings. By clicking Edit, we can see this environment's filter. We filter all incidents whose tier tag is T1-Infra, and we include warnings in this environment as well. When we look at this environment's automation, by going to the Settings menu and choosing AutoShare, we can see that we have set up an AutoShare with the Global Ops channel on Slack. Now, let's see what happens when a Tier 1 warning incident comes in. We are currently in the All Incidents environment, and a new alert has just come in. Clicking the incident and looking at its properties, we can see it has a T1-Infra tag, which means it should be routed to the Warning-Tier 1 infrastructure environment we set up. Going to the environment, we can see that it has indeed been routed here. In the Incidents Activity stream, 
we can see it has been shared on the Global Ops channel on Slack, as intended when we set up the automation. We can see the incident on the Slack channel itself. Let's now see what happens when the incident escalates to critical. If we go to the critical dash tier one infrastructure environment, we can see that it has been routed here at this stage. This environment was set up to automatically share incidents with ServiceNow and open a ticket. We can go to ServiceNow and see the incident in the ticket itself. BigPan environments are a powerful tool for incident management and automation. For more information, please visit our online documentation. And if you have any questions, please reach out to our support team via the in-app chat. I also invite you to watch our extensive Getting Started video series for more insights on working with Big Panda. Thanks for watching.